Okay, so Dr. Raj, first we'd like to know uh, Qatar has ranked tw um, 25th in the recent Global Information Technology Report, right. and that was in network readiness. So Qatar aspires to reach the 20th position by 2015. What steps that Qatar, does Qatar need to take in order to uh, rank higher and reach that position? So whether it's 25th or 20th, or, and the exact number doesn't matter. What the, the goal is, Qatar should be viewed as one of the leading countries in the use of information technology and communication technology. And uh, the way to do that is to attend to the fundamentals, uh, access to ubiquitous access to broadband connectivity everywhere, uh, high, high speed broadband, ubiquitous access to platforms that can be used by anybody. Uh, you know, in Arabic and so on, like iPad, like devices. Uh, capacity building, training all the people, the, the entire, all the, all the citizens. I, for example, in ICT, I would set up daily classes, one day computer literacy class. Anybody can come and take it for free. And uh, they bring their own computer and then sit there and you learn how to use it. And then they go. And finally, content, uh, books and mus music and newspapers. Uh, once you have all of that content, everybody will use it. And so I think by taking all these steps, suddenly you make yourself an ICT-rich environment. And therefore, and automatically, the world will see you as one of the leaders in the field. So you've mentioned broadband. When we look at the broadband ecosystem, there's always the, the, both the demand and the supply side. So how can we make sure that they're both equally strong uh, in Qatar? What are the steps that Qatar so needs the, to do? Uh, so the, uh, there's a fundamental flaw in the current business model where the phone companies are expected to charge and recover the entire cost of the broadband. And so much so, you know, even though the actual cost of providing it is negligible, it is the overheads associated with the company which they have to recover part of it from, from the broadband. And I've often said, if only we could have provided the bandwidth and the fiber and the infrastructure for free at the state's expense, then the phone companies don't have to charge much. And then if you said, we'll give the same capability to multiple people, then you would introduce competition. And uh, so I think what uh, has to happen is the cost of getting high-speed broadband, if I wanted 10 or 100 megabits per second minimum immediately, I don't, shouldn't have to pay more than 10, 20 dollars. Right now it's hundreds of dollars, if I can get it at all. And the other thing I notice is right now peering charges in Qatar are very high. So if I make a Skype call to USA into your phone in a Skype out call, it's only two cents a minute. On this side I'm using a computer on that side. And a computer to computer is free everywhere, but computer to phone. But if I am in USA and call Qatar, the instead of two cents a minute is thirty three cents a minute, and that's just built in into the existing system of peering charges that the country and the phone company charges, and there's no reason to do so. It's purely artificially built up there just to make money, and the amount of money you make is not worth it. You're better off you know if you want to be treated like an advanced country, your peering charges should be like advanced countries. So countries like USA, all of Europe, Australia, you know, Korea, Japan, all charge two cents a minute. Only you know, the backward countries like Africa and India, India is better now. It's, they, it used to be 33 cents, it's down to nine cents. But I've been saying to them, it should be two cents. China is like four cents. It should be two cents. <coughs> so there are things that can be done that are currently outside of the conventional wisdom. And I don't know what it will take, but I'll keep on 
uh, proselytizing or, or my soapbox, and so we'll see. Maybe one of these days it'll sink in. So you mentioned that broadband, it's, it's great, but there also needs to be content. So do you think Qatar needs only to improve on its Arabic e-content or also other languages maybe, or what should it do in that regard? Content, multimedia content, m- movies, you know, will be on all languages. And then the issue will be, can you get automatic translation? That's a research problem. ICT can help with uh, music. You know, so you want to listen to the music. Everybody enjoys listening to music from whatever language. But if you can understand the lyrics and see the lyrics, that'll be even better. That can be provided now. It was not possible in the old days. You, and you, you hear some of the words in the lyrics, but not all the words. And uh, newspapers. You can read any newspaper that you want completely online e-papers and that's also not fully developed and and, uh, and uh, photos images you know and uh, you know access to the web and uh, books all media content in all languages should be available and then we also need supporting technologies for summarization and translation Mm-hmm. Okay, so tell us about the digital library project that you're working on. Right. We'd like to know more about it. So basically, we spent the last 10 years scanning books mostly. And now that Google is scanning a lot more books, that we've, we've said we're not going to do that anymore, let Google do it. But we are actually doing uh, other things, like the thousand newspapers for the next thousand years to be archived and available. Uh, is one of the projects we are trying to get launched. We are also doing monuments, digital library of monuments. uh, UNESCO has 870 or so uh, heritage sites. These are very unique sites. And uh, most people don't never get a chance to go see all of that. They can't go to Taj Mahal, they can't go to Great Wall of China, they can't go to pyramids. if they can view those things virtually online, they can at least maybe get 50, 70, 80% of the enjoyment. So we are doing digital libraries of monuments and digital libraries of newspapers. And songs are already available. You can buy them and get them. You know. But there are lots of other songs that there's no market for that are not digitized folk songs, for example. So we're trying to get uh, some of those recorded. Okay. So when we look at the IT, ICT workforce in Qatar, we have around 20,000 ICT professionals currently, and Qatar wishes to uh, raise that number into, to the double, to have yes. its 40,000 employees uh, or ICT professionals by 2015. Do you think, uh, how can we do, how can Qatar reach that, aside from importing labor? Right. So basically, you have 20 years to do that, and if you want to double it, and so that means annually you need to add a thousand more people. That can't be from internal growth. Right now, the computer science education in Qatar University and CMU, Qatar, and all the others taken together, maybe is producing 100 or 200 ICT professionals. So there'll be a shortage of 800. So you can either get them from outside you probably have to get some of them from outside. The reason being, there is not enough children born here. And if you take 1,000 people all for ICT, there'll be nobody you know, working in the gas fields and petroleum and all of those other things, which are also needed to generate the revenues. Okay. So you've mentioned uh, some research areas, one of the research areas that Qatar needs to, to work on, which is transcribing or, or captioning. But what other research areas generally does Qatar re- need to exert more effort in or start to research more about? It goes back to the, the four or five topics we, we talked about. You know, we need to kind of have serious research into content of different kinds, multimedia content. We need to have serious research into accessibility and affordability. And we need to have serious research into platforms that can handle, if, if we take iPad, 
I'm sure there's Arabic for iPad, but uh, you know how easy or how you know maybe you know in a voice recognition would help make that uh, iPad you know Arabic data entry uh, much more easier. So there are probably half a dozen such things, and what you know basically infrastructure, computer platforms. Connectivity, and I'm, we already talked about connectivity, and and, uh, and you also need, you know, people, you know, uh, research into educating people. Uh, rather than saying we want to have 20,000, 20, 40,000 professionals, maybe the right vision, a right statement is everybody, every, the entire population, including expatriate population must be computer literate. They must know how to use email. They must know how to use, you know, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, a few other things, create documents and communicate. And that's probably uh, equally an important role uh, so that everybody is doing the, whatever they need to do with using computers. Professionals do programming or software or whatever other things you need that are require more specialized talent. Okay. So my last question would be uh, in the JITA report, Qatar Lab was in 42nd position when it came to the business usage of ICT. Uh, this area was one of the deficiencies or one of the weakness areas. So how can uh, Qatar ensure that its, its businesses, whatever, whether, whether it's small businesses or, or medium sized or large companies, do really use or maximize the, the potential of ICT? and raise its rankings in that regard. Yeah. So there are two parts to it. One is no matter what business you're in, use of ICT will make it better or faster or cheaper, whatever. Uh, so the, the we, you need to encourage all businesses, banks and you know, gas companies and, and small businesses, anybody. The, the reverse is to kind of create computer businesses that can support all these people. And that requires you know, companies like IBM or uh, you know, uh, Microsoft or Amazon, all of them, to find that this is a good place to have business. And I think it's possible. You know, we need to set that up. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for your time and for these valuable insights. And yeah, we look forward welcome. to seeing you again on Qatar. Okay. Thank you.